Good morning, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? I want to check if you can hear me. You can hear me now? Good. Good. I just got confirmation that you can hear me. I apologize over the start without sound. I don't know how that happened. Everybody can hear me now? Just let me know, please. Yes, great. Thank you, Jane. So people, I I'm, I'm, uh, want to give you a practical little announcement. Today is the last day um, we will have sunrise stroll and chat here in Galilee until probably the 19th in the morning. That's 10 days away. But it could also, uh, I, I might have something for you in Jerusalem this evening. And I may have something for you then maybe even Sunday evening or at least Sunday week I'm talking about. Or uh, at least Monday week uh, for sure. Maybe sunrise stroll and chat in Jerusalem before coming back here to Galilee. So just want to say, wish you many blessings for Advent and many blessings uh, for Christmas. But obviously we'll be in touch, God willing, before that, if the Lord gives us life. And then we can proceed. <laughs> so here we are in Magdala, your beloved Magdala. And we're here in a very special sky today. It actually rained last night. And then... Not too much. It was only an hour ago, actually. It was a. It might have been more earlier, and it's basically dried up again. But it gave a nice dousing to the uh, sprinkling to the ground. So, I'm happy to see this much color in the sky because I didn't anticipate that with the intense cloud we have. This is what I anticipated. Only this, but we also got this. There's a word, a question I have for you this morning about the whole of reality and experience and life. And what is the universe? What is our whole life experience? Obviously, some people can have certain afflictions and sufferings, um, disaster situations, obviously, in war and everything. But in general, the whole life experience is gratuitous because we didn't make ourselves and we were given an amazing gift. And the readings today speak of gratuitousness. The word gratuity uh, would be reduced in many places to mean just a tip, but there's something about that as well. Um, we are completely uh, gifted. And I want to go to the readings for a moment of Isaiah and also the Gospel. The last line of the Gospel is kind of what kicked off this thought. What you have freely received, give freely. And this is also part of the joy of volunteering. And volunteering isn't just to be signed up in an organization and to go away somewhere to be a volunteer. That happens at every moment of life to be a volunteer, to be somebody who generously gives without being asked to volunteer. And that's a reflection of our being in the image and likeness of God. Because he's, oh look at that lovely light coming out there from behind the cloud. So if we open up, uh, the last line of the gospel says, without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. And that was also the experience of the apostles. And all the fishermen here from the Sea of Galilee, their experience with Jesus was they received a gift that they didn't pay for, they didn't ask for, they didn't plan. First of all, it disturbed their lives and they didn't want to receive it. They were reluctant. But they were receiving a huge gift with that invitation to follow Jesus. 
It came at a cost in another side because it meant they had to give up a lot of things, including their own comfort. But the blessing they received in return, even in this life, was huge. It freed them from so much of themselves. That's the extraordinary uh, liberation of the gospel. And I would say it looks like to the world that what I did 50 years ago, almost, uh, in September, this coming September will be 50 years, to make a commitment to live not owning money, not getting married, uh, being obedient, ready to do what I would be asked to do with my life, to go to wherever I would be sent, to assume the responsibility, whatever assignment would be uh, given to me, to be obedient, to, be, to put my whole life uh, in the hands of the service of God and his people. And that's a special type of formal commitment. It's a form of uh, organizing life. But the virtues involved with that, of being detached from material things, of living with a pure heart, a chaste heart, of living with a complete um, uh, availability to serve when we are asked to serve, to be obedient, to say, yes, here I am, I will do that for you. This actually is an ultimate freedom. And these three words, these three ways of life, poverty, chastity, and obedience, these become vows or promises, but they're also virtues. And they're actually pathways to freedom. And it's to enter the freedom of the universe. The freedom of the gift of the universe. Behind every gift is a giver. And we were given this universe gratuitously. And after all the destruction we have done to each other, and maybe even also sometimes to the physical reality of the universe with pollution, industrial pollution of rivers, killing all the life there, pollution of space, of, of uh, the atmosphere, breathing, uh, industrial pollution, smoke, um, industrial byproducts, waste, uh, without properly being properly disposed and developed and, and reused for other things, properly um, applied, then we have, after all this damage, God comes back to us and he says, you know, you're going to be taken care of. I'm going to come and look after you personally. You will see me. I will no longer be hidden. This is Isaiah today. What I love about the farming images, you know, up here with the, with the herdsman, with the cows and so forth, it says here, uh, some beautiful images, you know, no more will you weep. He will be gracious to you. Graciousness, gratuitous. When you cry out, as soon as he hears, he will answer you. The Lord will give you the bread you need and the water for which you thirst. And in a desert, bread and water are huge blessings. And this is a very dry area, very dry climate in the Middle East, a uh, lot of desert all over North Africa, across through the, all the Arab air, peninsula, all the Arab area. Uh, it's a, uh, it has very fertile oases, like right here in Ginosar. This is one of the most fertile spots in the country. Um, but in general, there's a lot of desert. And that's the experience of the shepherds with their sheep and their goats and their herds going through with their camels and their donkeys and mules going through the deserts. The Lord will give you the bread you need and the water for which you thirst. 